Creo Simulate will automatically mesh your models when you run an analysis, but if you want to, you could view and modify the mesh that's going to be generated. And if you're new in Creo Simulate, I don't recommend doing that. I really only recommend adding mesh controls if you run the analysis and you see that your max element edge order is going up to a value of nine, which indicates that you might not be getting convergence. So let's take a look at how to view and modify the mesh. To do that, you'll go to the Refine Model tab in Creo Simulate, and here we have our AutoGem command. I'll click on it, and we get this AutoGem dialog box that allows us to create the mesh. And when I click on Create, you'll notice that I'm going to get an error over here in the Diagnostics dialog box, which is indicated by the red. And it's telling me that AutoGem did not work because I don't have any material properties assigned to the model. So that is a requirement prior to meshing. So let's go back to the Home tab, and I'll go to the Material Assignment command. And here we have the Material Assignment dialog box. I don't have any materials in this model, so I'll click the More button to the right of Material. And let's go to the Granta database. I'm going to use a ferrous metal, and let's grab the HSLA steel. I will add it to the model, then click the OK button and then click OK out of Material Assignment. Let's return to Refine Model, and then click the AutoGem command again. By the way, AutoGem stands for Automatic Geometric Element Mesher. And I'll click the Create button. And now it is working. We'll give it a few seconds. And be aware that Creo Simulate uses what are called P-type elements as opposed to H-type elements. And H-type elements are the ones that are used in traditional finite element analysis, or FEA. But again, Creo Simulate uses P-type elements that are associated with geometric element analysis. So you're not going to get the regular kind of rectangular mesh that you might be used to if you've used ANSYS or Abacus or NASTRAN or some other kind of P element code. And here we have our AutoGem summary dialog box. You can take a look at the mesh. And again, if you come from a traditional FEA background like I did, when the first time that you see one of these meshes, you're like, holy cow, this isn't going to work. This is just wrong. But it works. And we can see in the summary dialog box that we've created about 6,000 tetrahedra elements. And a tetrahedra is a four-sided element. Imagine taking a triangle and adding triangles on the three sides of that original triangle. And with those three additional triangles, they converge together at a corner. That's a tetrahedra. Essentially, it looks like a pyramid. And you can see some other information inside of here, like how long it took to generate the mesh. And we can close out of here and then close this. And it asks us if we want to save the mesh. And you can do this, and they'll say, this will save you a few seconds when you run the analysis. But I'm going to add some controls in here. So I'm going to click No, and we get out of the mesher. There is a drop-down list over here with some additional controls. If you had to find some idealizations like shell elements, you'll have the ability to control whether you're going to mesh with those mid-surfaces or not. And we also have settings in here. And in the AutoGem settings dialog box, there are a bunch of controls that are automatically selected. I'm just going to point out the element types down here at the bottom. So for shell elements, it'll automatically generate quadrilaterals and trilateral elements. In other words, elements with four nodes or three nodes. And for solids, here we have the drop-down list where you can choose. I believe the default is actually Tetra Wedge. I don't believe that for some reason. I might have accidentally clicked Brick Wedge Tetra earlier. But Tetra Wedge will create a combination of those tetrahedra that I just described and also wedges. And the difference between a tetrahedra and a wedge, the tetrahedra is that pyramid-shaped element with the wedge, imagine taking a triangle and extruding it. That's a wedge element. And a brick element is taking a quadrilateral like a square or a rectangle or a parallelogram or any four-sided figure and then extruding it. So the brick element will have six sides to it. Uh, let's leave the default wedge tetra. 
Also, you have limits in here. There are maximum and minimum edge angles and face angles. There's also a maximum aspect ratio, which is the difference in length between the shortest and longest sides, and the maximum edge turn. I recommend not messing around with these numbers in here because the numbers that are selected are the results of lots of testing and confirmation of the elements against standard known problems. So without changing anything, I'm just going to click OK out of this dialog box. Also, you can add some different controls inside of here. So earlier I mentioned that if you run the analysis and you're taking a look at the results and you're seeing that the maximum element edge order goes up to a value of nine, that indicates you might not have gotten convergence. So you might want to add some different controls. And there are a variety of different controls in here, but the ones that I mainly use are things like maximum element size. And before I do maximum element size, it's a good idea to know how big your model is. And if I go to the inspect tab, I can go to measure. I'm going to measure the length of an edge over here just to get an idea. And I see that, okay, this curve length is a value of 221. Uh, let's go and take a look at what the original mesh was. I'm going to just mesh real quick. And since I already meshed this, and I know this takes about 30 seconds or so, uh, we'll come back when the mesh is complete. All right, so here we take a look at the edge, and we can see that there's really essentially only two elements along that edge over there. And if I'm finding that I'm not getting convergence, maybe I want to get more elements in there, so I want to maybe set a maximum element size. So let's close out of here, not save the mesh again. And if I go to the control drop down, I can set my maximum element size. And right now I can set it for individual surfaces. You could change to edge curves, points. I don't really recommend that. Uh, but let's go to the entire component. You'll notice this gets grayed out here and it automatically selects the part. And I'm going to use a maximum element size of 25. Let's click the OK button. And there you can see an indication in the graphics area that we have an auto gem control applied over here. If you go to the in graphics toolbar, you can go to the simulation display icon and you can control, hey, I don't want to display auto gem controls. If I click the preview button, that goes away. But I'm going to add a few other controls. So let's turn that back on. All right. So we have applied that control. Let's hit the auto gem button and then click create. And this will take a bit longer than the first time because it's going to generate more elements. So let's come back after the edit. All right, actually that took even quicker than before. Uh, and I can see that the elapsed time was 0.15 minutes. In other words, about nine seconds. Let's move this out of the way. And you saw before I got, I believe the number was like 5675. Tetra was the number of elements created. Now we're about 13,000 elements. And you can see that I've got quite a bit more elements along this edge over here that are generated. Let's click the close button and close out of here. And no, I'm not going to save the mesh. I am actually going to get rid of this mesh control. So I can select it, right click and choose delete. And then yes, I want it to be deleted. All right, going back to the control drop down menu over here, some other controls that uh, I use. A lot of times I will do the uh, isolate for exclusion. And with isolate for exclusion, if you're finding that you are getting singularities in your model, in other words, areas where you're getting artificially high stress values, you can, can create these isolate for exclusion control uh, mesh controls where you're essentially grabbing different elements in the model where you're getting singularities and you can eliminate them from the results display so that the results make more sense. And where you might get singularities is if you are automatic, if you are applying loads or constraints to individual points in a three-dimensional model. Also, edges have zero area. Uh, so for the same reason, edge loads and edge constraints can also get you singularities. And also, you can specify if you have re-entrant corners, like this is a re-entrant corner, 
with an angle less than 120 degrees, you can select those areas over here. So for example, where you have sharp corners, especially rectangular corners, as opposed to this going from a straight segment to a curved segment, you can get those high stresses at those corners, which is a big reason why we put fillets in those different corners to carry the loads. But let's cancel out of here. And I'm not actually going to create this isolate for exclusion control in there. Uh, and one other one to show you that, I, or actually two other ones I want to show you, edge distribution. So edge distribution, you can actually control the number of elements along a given edge. And so before, again, we only got two elements on this edge before. I can select this edge. A lot of times I like to select corresponding edges on the other sides and maybe even the edges that they might be mapped to. And I can say, hey, on these four edges that I've selected, I want to make sure that I get, let's say, 10 elements. And it'll make sure I get at least 10 nodes on each of those edges, usually exactly 10, I believe. All right, and here's the option if you want to make sure that you didn't get more nodes on that edge, you could check the box to prevent additional nodes. And let's click the OK button. And like before, we will hit the Mesh button and then click Create and let it run. All right, and we're done, and this ran in about 0.2 minutes or about 12 seconds. And this time, we actually ended up with a bit fewer elements. You'll notice that this dipped down to 56.23, where when we had no controls, it was 56.75. So that's kind of interesting. Let's click the Close button out of the Summary dialog box. And again, you can see that, yes, we ended up getting more nodes around on these particular edges. And again, if you're seeing those different edges, uh, especially if you're doing a multi-pass adaptive analysis and do a P element plot, you can go to the edges where you're hitting that maximum polynomial order of nine and then add these edge distribution controls in order to get more elements on those edges. So hopefully you will get convergence. All right, close out of there. No, I am not going to save the mesh. And let's, let's leave that mesh control inside of there. And one other thing that I'm going to do is that a lot of times you might want to force an element node where you're going to put your various strain gauges during testing. So let's say that when I test this, I'm going to have a strain gauge over on this surface and I want to get a node there. Let me turn on my datum plane and my datum point visibility. And so when you are in Creo Simulate, you can create datum geometry. I'll go to the inspect tab over here. Actually, the refine model tab is where they are. And I'm going to create a point and I will create it on the surface. And I can hold down the right mouse button to activate my offset references collector and select datum plane DTM1. And let's also select the datum plane DTM2 and then change the offsets. Maybe I want it right there on DTM1. And let's make it a value of 160 from DTM2. Click the OK button. And now I have my datum point created. Let's turn off our datum plane visibility using the in graphics toolbar. And we can go to the controls and I can choose to create a hard point. And since I just created that feature, it was still selected, so it automatically was collected in here. And you can choose if you wanted to grab a pattern of points or intent points. You even have this lattice set if you are using lattice features for additive manufacturing that were added in Creo Parametric 4.0. So let's click the OK button. And so now I've got my hard point designated in there. And now when I click the Auto Gem button and click Create, we'll let it run and it'll take a few seconds. And the same time it took 0.22 minutes, so slightly longer than before. That comes out to what, about 13.2 seconds. Let's click the close button. Actually, let's leave the summary dialog box. You'll notice that the number of elements just went up slightly in this case because of the hard point. You'll notice where I have my datum point, you can see we have a bunch of elements converge over there. And that facilitates generating simulation measures if you wanted to compare the results of what you get from the analysis to your test results later on. Again, if I had, say, a strain gauge there and wanted to compare my stresses, displacements, and strains at that particular location. So those are the various different controls that you have for meshing. And again, you really only need to do that if you are 
finding that you're not getting convergence when you are running the analysis or if you want to make sure that you're generating results where you are testing. And again, Creo Simulate will automatically generate a mesh for you when you are running the analysis. If you generate the mesh when you're doing this, you can save it out to disk in order to save a few seconds when you are running the analysis. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshow.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.